rapid and complete evaluation of the eyes and adnexa as part of the full physical examination. We're going to discuss the eight principal parts of the eye examination in a way that they can be accomplished usually within two minutes. We will then expand each of the eight points to show you a more detailed method for accomplishing the exam within five minutes. An ophthalmologist will expand each of the eight points in other ways, taking a much longer time for a more detailed evaluation, depending on what the ophthalmologist determines from the history and the initial screening. This demonstration assumes the history has been taken and there are no specific areas of the eyes to be examined in depth. In other words, this is a brief, two-minute general screening exam. Every examination begins with hand washing. The first two points of the eye examination are done with some mechanism for occluding the opposite eye as you do the exam. One method is to use the patient's hand or have her hold an occluder. A second method is to use paper tissue behind the glasses. Fold and place the tissue from the top and remove from the bottom to avoid injury to the ocular surface. Point one. Rapid assessment of visual acuity is typically done with a near card covering one eye and then the other. The patient is directed to read the smallest print visible and the vision is recorded as either the Jager number or the 20 over distance number from the card. In the absence of a standardized card, an alternate method is to read fine print at near. In a 20 foot or mirrored lane, an eye chart can be used to assess the visual acuity. Each eye is tested and recorded. Point two, visual field. With the patient covering one eye, a fast method for detecting scotoma is to ask the patient to look at your face and notice if any parts are missing, distorted, or blurred. A quick way to screen for hemianopia or sensory inattention is by simultaneous finger counting. A quick screen for peripheral vision in the absence of a hemianopia can be done with either a moving cotton tip or your fingertip. The smaller the object used, the better able you are to identify a visual field defect. The third through the sixth points can be evaluated with a Finoff transilluminator, pin light, or the ophthalmoscope light. Point three, extraocular muscle motility. Initially, have the patient look towards your light and assess the location of the light reflexes. If in the middle of the pupil, then the patient's eyes are aligned. Then check versions by having the patient follow the light or other non-accommodative target in the six cardinal directions, observing both eyes as you do this. If the motility is full, then you can record the versions as normal. Point four, pupils. Dim the room illumination and use the handheld light to observe the general size, shape, and vigor of reactivity of each pupil. The pupil should be equal within a half a millimeter and symmetric in shape and reactivity to light. This is PERL, P-E-R-L, or pupils are equal and reactive to light. Point five, external examination. With room light or the pen light, evaluate the position of the eyes in the orbit, observe for unusual lesions, droopiness of the eyelid, or ptosis, and palpate for preauricular nodes and submandibular adenopathy. Point six, ocular surface exam. Have the patient look down, Hold the lower lids and then have the patient look up. Observe the conjunctiva for evidence and location of redness and presence and character of discharge. Then have the patient look down and repeat the same evaluation. Look at the cornea for clarity and the quality and symmetry of the light reflecting from the surfaces. Point seven, ophthalmoscope. Dial in plus eight to plus 10 diopters back away from the patient approximately eight inches and using your left eye, your left hand to hold the ophthalmoscope, look into the patient's left eye. You should see a red reflex. As you move forward, the reflex will sharpen and you can reduce the diopters to approximate the patient's refraction. Find a blood vessel and follow it to the optic nerve. The nerve is evaluated for sharpness of the disc margin, dilation of the blood vessels, and presence and description of the optic cup. This is repeated for the right eye. Point eight. Interocular pressure is generally not part of the two-minute screening examination. We conclude with a two-minute complete exam in the normal patient. In the course of two minutes, you should be able to rapidly screen for the presence or absence of normal. After checking the visual acuity, we then proceed to check the visual field. 
first the right eye by confrontation, and then the left eye, central scotoma, and then counting fingers by confrontation. We will then move to examine the pupil. The room lights have been dimmed, and each eye is evaluated using a light source. Here we use the ophthalmoscope to evaluate each pupil for roundness and briskness of response. We are now following the patient's motility, having checked the central reflexes and determining the versions in six gazes. We then do the external examination, including evaluation of the lymph nodes, the eyelids, the lid position, the conjunctival surface, and the corneal surface, repeating for the left eye. Now we're moving to point seven in the ophthalmoscope. First we look at the right eye, beginning with the red reflex, and repeating uh, with the left eye, again beginning with the red reflex, finding a blood vessel, focusing the blood vessel and following it to the optic nerve, and then evaluating the optic nerve for presence of cupping and the size of the cupping. In the course of two minutes, you should be able to screen the normal patient. If problems are found or history directs, then in five minutes you will have a better idea of the clinical problem and can formulate a plan. A more extended exam may be required to delineate specific conditions.